Hello everyone and welcome to Sips and Stories. My name is Elizabeth and in today's video I will be doing my spring TBR. So I am so excited that it is finally spring and that we can start planting again and taking our walk and going on road trips and things like that. And I've been saving a lot of books to read for this time of year and they mostly have to do with coming of age stories that feature really good nature writing. So join me today and grab your favorite beverage as I discuss these beautiful spring-like books. The first book that I have to share with you, of course, is The Secret Garden. There's no surprise there. If you haven't read The Secret Garden, now is the perfect time to read it. It's such a beautiful story and one of my all-time favorite children's books. I've read it several times, but this is the first time that I will be reading the new Mina Lima edition of The Secret Garden. And I have been collecting all of the Mina Lima editions. I'm still missing a couple. But there's something about The Secret Garden one in particular that I really love. If you're unfamiliar with Mina Lima, they publish gorgeously illustrated and interactive classics and they're also coming out with the Harry Potter books as well. So they're absolutely beautiful books to collect um, for book collectors and they're really great books to give as gifts. They are very delicate though so I recommend waiting to tell your child is about maybe eight or nine before gifting these books um, because you want to make sure that they stay in gorgeous shape. And I love the story of The Secret Garden. It is such a beautiful story about nature and learning to come out of your shell and accept yourself. I think, right, Mary Lennox is one of the most unlikable characters in children's literature. She's just such a little crab at the beginning of the story. She's such a little pill. And just the way that she blossoms herself and comes out of her shell and she's so mean and spunky. I really like her a lot. Sarah Crew and A Little Princess is still my favorite by Frances Hodgson Burnett. But there's something really unique about The Secret Garden and I do think it is the descriptions of nature. I know Frances Hodgson Burnett herself was an avid gardener and there are some gorgeous gorgeous passages in this book and especially towards springtime. My favorite I think is when Mr. Craven, he is traveling and he just gets this premonition to go back to Miss Lithwaite Manor. And just those passages during the springtime are absolutely beautiful. And her depictions of God and spirituality, which she, she never really says it's God. She calls it the great good thing, but they're such beautiful passages and I really am looking forward to rereading them again this year. Also, I know that they just came out with a new movie last year which went directly to video on Hulu. So I'm excited to read this book again, especially the Mina Lima edition with the gorgeous illustrations and then go back and watch that movie as well. So it should be a good times reading The Secret Garden. It's always enjoyable to read The Secret Garden. The next few books that I have to share are also very illustrated, beautiful books books that I highly recommend owning if you love to collect beautiful books like I do. The first is The Country Diary of an Edwardian Lady by Edith Holden. And I didn't know this book even existed until a couple years ago. I found it at a used bookstore and I absolutely fell in love with it. It's basically, as the name implies, a diary of a country lady. Um, and it has some of the most beautiful illustrations and depictions of nature that I've seen in any book. So apparently the story goes that this book was just hidden away in some manor house for years and years and they discovered it and thought it was so well done and so beautiful that they published it. And so no one really knows much about this woman Edith Holden but when you read this book it's absolutely stunning and they published it by taking scans of her actual drawings and her actual handwriting and I'm telling you she has some of the best penmanship that I have ever seen. So it is organized by month so it's starts out in January and goes throughout the year till December, but I'm including it in the spring TBR because obviously the spring has just this abundance of flowers and animals and birds, and Edith Holden's beautiful illustrations are just so stunning. And so she'll have illustrations on one page, and then she'll have poetry and nature observations on another page. It's just gorgeous to peruse and look through. And one of the things that I don't think she got a ton of credit for it was just her science skills. And so she really was a true naturalist because not only she is an excellent artist, but if she drew a picture of a plant or a flower or an animal, she gives you the scientific name of that flower, then she gives you the common name, then she'll give you really detailed drawings of these flowers too. They almost look like they belong in a science book. They're so beautiful. 
and she peppers it with these stunning um, quotes <laughs> from passages from poetry and Shakespeare and literature. So it's just a beautiful book to peruse and look through, especially at this time of year during the spring. And I love this book so much. But yeah, this one is worth tracking down. Alrighty, another book in a similar vein is How to Be a Wildflower by Katie Daisy. I'm sure many of you are familiar with Katie Daisy's artwork. She is like our generation's version of Mary Inglebright. I see her artwork everywhere. Her and Anna Bond are everywhere. And she just has really beautiful pictures of flowers and animals and plants. And this is her nature sketchbook basically. And it's really well organized. It's very similar to A Country Diary of an Edwardian lady. It's not as scientific, but it has that similar theme of having pictures, descriptions, and passages from poetry. She also has things that are a lot of fun, like favorite hikes and how to pack for a camping trip and what to take on a canoe trip and things of that nature. So it's a beautiful, beautiful book. I'll share some illustrations with you right now. It's so stunning. And it also transitions well into summer as well. So there's a lot of pictures of hikes and forests and trees. But most importantly are the flowers. <laughs> I just love all the flowers in this book. And some of them are scans from actual pressed flowers that Katie Daisy collected. And then you can press your flowers in here as well. So it's just a really gorgeous book as well. And it's really interesting to compare to A Country Diary of an Edwardian Lady because even though these books were published 100 years apart, they both feature terrific artwork. And I think Katie Daisy and Edith Holden had that same spirit, that same love of nature, which is timeless. <laughs> The next book that I'd like to share and read this spring is The Wind in the Willows by Kenneth Graham. And I have not read this book. This is another childhood classic that has passed me by. Um, so I've read The Secret Garden numerous times, but I have never read Wind in the Willows. And I know it's such a favorite childhood classic about Mole and Mr. Toad and Toad Hall and all these crazy characters. And I think it's a great time to read it in the spring because in fact, it starts off in the spring. So I'll read you the first few sentences because they really evoke that springtime feeling. Chapter one, the riverbank. The mole had been working very hard all morning spring cleaning his little house. First with brooms, then with dusters, then on ladders and steps and chairs, with a brush and a pail of whitewash. Spring was moving in the air above and the earth below and all around him, penetrating even his dark and lowly little house with its spirit of divine discontent and longing. So I just love that the way this book starts off with Mole spring cleaning his house. And this edition is the Penguin Threads edition. It's beautiful editions. It's meant to look like a cross stitch. And then if you open the inside cover, it shows the back of the cross stitch. So I love these penguin thread editions. I'd love to own them all, but some are very hard to find, especially Emma. Can't check that one down for the life of me. The next childhood classic that I would like to read is one that I recently discovered thanks to Kate Howe, and that is Rabbit Hill by Robert Lawson. So I had never heard of this book until Kate mentioned it on her channel during middle grade March. And she said it just was a really charming story about this group of animals that live on this farm and in these gardens and they live in this ab abandoned house. And so a family buys the house and moves in and all the animals are having these discussions about what type of people are moving in, these big folk, and what kind of people they'll be, whether they'll be kind people that have gardens and plant or whether they'll be cruel people that have traps and dogs. So it sounds really fun. It sounds a little bit like Watership Down for kids um, or maybe Maybe something like Mrs. Frisbee and the Rats of Nim. So this kind of animals versus man type of story. And the one thing that Kate didn't mention was how beautiful the illustrations are. So I'll show you a couple of those because I was just stunned by these illustrations. They're so charming and I cannot wait to read this one. So I wish I knew some young people to read this with, but I am perfectly happy reading this one on my own. The next book that I would like to read this spring is Bird by Bird by Anne Lamont. 
and there is really nothing about this book that has to do with spring other than its title and its front cover, um, Bird by Bird. It's basically a writing memoir, probably the most famous writing memoir out there. Um, and Anne Lamont is a writing instructor. And she just is talking about her life as a writer and just giving some advice on how to become a better writer. So I've been thinking a lot about taking some children's writing courses um, this summer and I thought it'd be uh, nice to read this book in um, anticipation of taking some of those writing courses. And it does, when you're reading this, it does feel like you're taking a writing class from a very hippie teacher at Berkeley or something like that. She just has a lot of funny descriptions. She talks about her brother and he's supposed to turn in this report about birds, hence the title Bird by Bird. And he procrastinates on the report and it is the day before it's due and he's at the kitchen table crying and he just tells his dad, how am I gonna finish this? What am I supposed to do? And his dad sits down with them and says, look, we're just gonna take it bird by bird. And so that's kind of her attitude towards writing is that you just don't take it too seriously. The most important thing to do is just get it all down on paper and then go from there. So I'm looking forward to reading this book once and for all. Another book that I plan to read this spring is The Girl of Limberlost by Jean Stratton Porter. And this book has been recommended to me numerous times based on what I like to read. I love classics. I especially love girl coming of age stories. So this book was published in 1909, another book that's over 100 years old. But what's unique about it is that it was not published in Europe or the UK. It wasn't set in Canada like Anna Green Gables. It's uniquely American. It's set in the Midwest here in the United States. And I just find that fascinating because it's really hard to find classics that are set in the Midwest. It's about a little girl named Eleonora and Eleonora is very unique and special and different. She gets teased a lot at school and her mother is this very domineering woman who tries to control her and is always telling Eleonora what to do. So Eleonora finds solace in nature. So she goes out into nature, into the woods around her house to escape and reconnect with herself. And because it's the Midwest, it's not like Sherwood Forest or something like that, or Anna Green Gables, Canada Forest. It's more of swampland and marshland. So that alone sounds very interesting. So I'm excited to hear the descriptions of nature in this book because I think they're going to be unique, like something I've never read before. And I know that Eleonora meets a boy in the woods and they become friends. And I think there might even be a romance. So I cannot wait to read this one. I think it's going to be absolutely terrific. And the last book that I have to read this spring season is The Samurai's Garden by Gail Tasukiyama. So I'm sorry for mispronouncing her name, but I've had this book on my TBR the longest out of all of these books. Um, I first heard about it back in college, so over 10 years ago, and we were all giving presentations about some of our favorite books. And I remember the, my friend who gave the presentation on this book, he just did such a good job with it, the way he described it, that I knew I had to read it. And I was fortunate enough to find a really nice copy at a used bookstore last year. And I was saving it to read at this time of year, especially because it's called The Samurai's Garden, wink, wink. And I know that it is about a young man named Steven. It's set in Japan and Steven goes to live at his family's vacation house while he is recovering from tuberculosis. And it's set right before World War II. And Stephen just is very lonely. He's in solitude. He's just trying to recover from this illness. And he ends up befriending his gardener, Matsu, I believe. And Matsu ends up teaching him about life and love and what it means to be a man. And so I'm definitely getting some Mr. Miyagi Karate Kid vibes from this, but I cannot wait to read this. I think it's going to be a beautiful book. Alrighty, everyone. Thank you for joining me for my spring TBR. I am so excited about all of these books. As I said, some of them are old favorites and some of them are brand new to me and I cannot wait to get to them. I absolutely love nature writing and it's one of my favorite things about classics and literature especially. And I think this is the perfect time to read these excellent books. Thank you everyone. Have a great spring season.